So you're ready to get into the business of numismatics. I mean, you've heard all the stories out there. You've seen the, you know, concrete documentation, you know, like for instance. And, uh, you know, you're just going to refer to my little uh, mouse pointer uh, as we guide through this topic. But you've probably taken a stroll down a website like Great Collections or maybe a Heritage Auctions or a Stax Bowers. And they have a very fantastic archive of all of the previous sold listings of coins. And you've probably had watched your fair share of YouTube channels, you know, just kind of outline, outlining the, the money-making opportunity of grading coins and then selling it on the secondary market. I mean, it's a real thing. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it poses its challenges, and I know a lot of people that do it with great success, myself included. Um, I've, I've taken a lot of what I've known and kind of like the trials and tribulations of, of doing the whole grading and then, you know, selling it afterwards game um, into consideration. And then, then, you know, that's why I do pretty good. Now, am I making this kind of money, for example, a 1932 Washington Quarter? Which is kind of a common date. I mean, it is the first year of the Washington Quarter Series, but take a look at this. $25,876 that this one sold for. And I happen to know that you could pick up a really nice uh, original Blast White 1932 Philadelphia uh, first year Washington Quarter for under $100 raw. All right. So, I mean, that is a heck of a rip if you're able to achieve that. And, uh, I mean, just look at this. Look at all the money, the potential. Just through the first five coins on this list of Washington Quarters, there's over $100,000 of coins. Uh, of just pure, straight up, just steak. You know, big old two-inch two inch steak with all the gristle and all the action just in full display here. And I, I know it's kind of a weird analogy, uh, but that when there is steak, there's a lot of sizzle. I mean, that's uh, wholeheartedly. Uh, I mean, just look. I mean, and and pay close attention to the dates of the coins on the list. They're not exactly rare key dates, right? I mean, a 1962 Washington Quarter, yeah, it's 90% silver. But, you know, if you've done your thorough research, you know that that is a coin that existed in hundreds of millions of produced examples at the Mint. So, how do we get to this point where we find and identify a coin? Whether we bought a collection, we happen to find and identify a few really nice examples of coins. Or maybe there are other ways of, of obtaining these coins. You also have to look at that as well, you know, via buying sealed uh, new old stock, you know, kind of rolls and stuff from eBay or, you know, locally a coin shop. I mean, there is that possibility too. Um, the thing you got to know about a lot of these coins is, especially the more modern stuff, is that they're driven specifically for what we call the registry set system, okay, which is a group of people that put together the highest and most finest grades of their respective coins together. Uh, it could be a date set, it could be a decade set, whatever the case may be, they pay through the nose for for even some of the most common dates. I, I mean, we saw 1960s. Here's a 55D. 30, here's another 32. Um, here's a 67 special mint set. That's a double die reverse. I mean, are you kidding me? This is a coin that you could pull out of a $10 special mint set that sold for $11,753.50 during its day. And a lot of these coins are definitely still worth that. So we, we've looked down the list, we've kind of identified, well, you know, I've noticed that a few of these specific dates of coins sell for quite a bit of money. And obviously they have their reasons, right? Maybe it's a coin where you, you just didn't see the best quality strikes from that respective date. You know, like the 62D, I mean, what in the world is this doing here in the top 30 list? of most expensive coins that have sold on great collections, right? I mean, it's a it's a really, really good question to ask yourself. But at the same time, you just can't help but notice just the five-figure price tags that accompany every single coin on the list. And 
when there's dollar signs, there's opportunity. All right. So what we're going to do in this video as kind of a way of not only determining, you know, what you should do at this point once you've identified that these coins are selling for a lot of money. But it's also important to know what is the overall cost of sending in a coin to a PCGS or NGC. Okay, I think in this lesson we'll use PCGS because they are kind of like the gold standard of coin grading. I, I mean, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of you would agree that are familiar with the grading system and the companies that that provide that service. They are they are definitely the top dog in the grading world. All right, so we've identified Washington Quarters as being a like a hotbed of just some smoking hot bitchin' coins. And if you could, you know, make two, three, four, five thousand dollars a pop, maybe not the five figures you see here, but you know, this is something you can work work towards. But if you're able to turn around some of those uh kind of like early sixties, ninety percent silver quarters that used to be in grandmom's album at one point because it's got toning on it, um, then you are in good shape. Okay, so what we do from here is we go to the source of the grading product, all right? PCGS.com is a great site to go to. Furthermore, you do have like all different types of um, tabs at the top of the screen. You got the services. If you're ready to submit coins for grading, this is probably the tab that you'll go into. Of course, you got to pay for the membership and all that stuff. There's a cost to everything. Getting started in coins doesn't necessarily have to be expensive, but there is some upfront costs that are involved. Um, and when, when you when you join um, when you join you know a um, a membership in order to submit coins, okay, you do have to pay a finite amount of money per year. It's an annual fee, you know, it's a hundred a couple hundred bucks or whatever it is, maybe even less than that. Um, but once you've done that and you've paid your $150, we'll just use that as an example. Then you're ready to explore, all right? What coins should you target? Which coins to you are the most accessible? Because this is going to be the first expense that you will incur in the hobby. Now, you don't have to necessarily, again, go out and spend $5,000 on your first coin and then send it off to the graders and then expecting result A. All right. It doesn't necessarily have to be that that way. You could go and spend five dollars. You could spend twenty dollars. You could spend a hundred dollars on a coin. Um, you know, obviously you're looking for quality. All right. To, to a lot of people, that's kind of like the most easiest, low hanging fruit type of coins to look for. It's high quality coins that exhibit very little wear or any sort of distracting marks. I mean, take a look at this 1966. Washington quarter that you see here before you all right it says right here it's a PCGS mid-state 68 so it does have a lot of things going for it okay but take a close look at the coin and I would personally invite you guys to go to the website and look at the various other coins and dates and it doesn't matter what it is it can be Washington quarters Lincoln cents Mercury dimes seated Liberty half dollars whatever your target is all right, they will have examples of specific grades starting from the top and then working its way down. This is important for this one reason. You got to know what that kind of like threshold is of a specific grade that will earn you many thousands of dollars at the end, right? Because you don't want to get into this and only make $50 because you will be grossly disappointed by a time you factor in all of the fees, you factor in the shipping, you factor in the sale aspect of it, right? You got to consign it some way, whether you sell it yourself on eBay or you consign a company like a great collections or a heritage, you got to keep in mind, there are seller fees involved. So they, there is a, a group of fees that are involved um, that come out to a total amount of money, all right? And at the end of it all, you have to net a profit. That's that's the ultimate goal in all this. 
net a profit and net the biggest damn profit that you could find, right? Because we're not non-profit organization type people unless you really do work for that. In that case, I do apologize uh, because those are fantastic careers. Um, but when we're getting into the coin business, it kind of feels like a very selfish business. Like you want to make as mo the most amount of money as you possibly can. If you're not in the collector part of it and you're strictly in it for the business, you want to be as selfish as you could get and kind of be also nitpicky. You want to have the finest examples of coins that you will send out to PCGS. All right. So this 1966 is a great starting point. And there's a reason why I picked this specific coin out of the many dozens of of other various dates and mint marks within the series. Now it goes from 1932 all the way up to the current current era right now. Um, so the U.S. Mint have has been producing Washington quarters. You know there are various different types variants like Statehood quarters, America the Beautiful, and then we got this new Washington crossing the Delaware for this year. But 1966 is a clad composition coin. All right, so as far as cost is concerned, it could be the least expensive coin that you will ever purchase um, when it comes to prospecting. Now take a look at the highest grade. Take a look at the price guide value. And then also take a look at the coins that have actually sold at that grade value. And also you will see NGC graded coins and their respective sold prices. Now, obviously, when you look at this graph, the numbers are quite polarizing, right? It's a 1966 Washington Quarter, a coin in which many millions were made. I mean, there is literally no shortage of 1966 Washington Quarters. However, I could definitely say this without a shadow of a doubt. It is also one of the most difficult coins to find in mint state condition, mainly because these were never produced into a mint set. In 1966 so the the amount of supply out there to obtain a mid-state business strike 1966 Washington quarter is pretty much one of the most rarest coins you'll find because the only thing that they did make during this year direct from the US mint as a collector item is a special mint set okay those have a different strike they're a lot more hammered um, the SMS coins were a replacement for not only the mint set for that year, but also the proof coins for that year. So it's kind of like a mashup of both different types of technologies and quality controls and things like that. The SMS coins will also fool you because the ones without any sort of like cameo contrast or anything like that will appear to look like a mint state coin. All right. So. We have this coin right here in Mint State 68, which commands a respectable amount of money. Now, PCJS has a price guide value of $15,000. This number three below it denotes the amount of coins that have been graded at this level. So there are three that exist in Mint State 68. It seems like that there's a lot of room for opportunity here to find other examples that could grade this high. All right, the one example that did sell was on LM, which is Legend Morphe Auctions, Legend Rare Coin, which sold January 2019 in the amount of $11,750, all right, which is a lot of money, all right, but keep in mind, the net amount of money that will come to you by the time you take money out to factoring like capital gains, cat tax, and all the other stuff, you know, you might end up pocketing about $6,500 to $7,000 off that one coin. But still, that's a heck of a payday. And just imagine having a few of those type of coins. After doing a lot of research, doing a lot of buy and sells, selling and trading, you know, it's a possibility that you could have, you know, enough, uh, enough graded inventory at the highest level that you could afford to have multiple five-figure coins at great collections or heritage or legend. Um, so 1966, that's what we're going to look for. But also keep in mind the next grade down. Let's say you didn't get that 68. A 67 plus will go for $1,800, thereabouts. It's a baseline. Again, this is kind of like a price guide. Uh, there are nine 
graded at a 67 plus still a very valuable coin even if you did find one it came back 67 plus that's a coin that probably will command somewhere in like 12 to 1500 dollar range that's not bad all right but again you also have to factor in the actual fees and costs with grading we're gonna to get to that here momentarily all right so you're gonna to have to look for these 1966 quarters so go to ebay go to your local dealer go to a coin show if you got them go to many coin shows because the most successful people in the business will attend all the coin shows and they will also go to all the coin shops again this is coming from not only personal experience but I know of, an, uh, of a number of people that do this for a living and they do it really well. And that's why they're able to make this their front and forward career choice. All right. And it's a very profitable, a very fruitful, fruitful one at that. All right. So we're on eBay. There's not a whole lot of results. There's a lot of those so-called SMS coins that come out, come out of those special mint set co uh, uh, packages that you see coming from the mint. Um, but you know, there's not a lot out there, which kind of, kind of helps paint the picture that this is indeed a little bit of a rare coin. So you're going to just going to have to go all the way down into the list. You're going to have to look for coins that look like this. This is the first BU uncirculated mint state coin that I've come across. That's 1966. You'll pay $7 for it. I know that sounds asinine at face value because it's a 1966 quarter right but how many mid-state examples of this particular day do you see out there okay again uh don't feel jaded to think that this is a coin that you could just find in circulation going through bank rolls or going through your your uh um, your piggy bank because it's not going to happen these are generally have been hoarded at one point and preserved at this mid-state level so you'll go through and you'll get an idea. I mean, this one's a circulated 66, so $495 obviously is not realistic in this particular case, but you're going to get to a point where you're going to find a few examples that'll fit your criteria. You know, um, so far we haven't seen a whole lot. So it's, it's quite, quite a rarity. Um, so yeah there you go so here's another one right here 1966 um unk five bucks if you did a buy it now on there all right so we've determined that if you wanted to buy this one single solitude coin it's going to cost you somewhere like five to ten bucks okay so that's going to be your first um first kind of like expense that's going to go into this particular exercise of grading a coin so you buy the coin, it comes to you, it looks good. You're like, man, this thing can really grade high. You've paid, let's say, $10. We'll use $10, use nice round numbers. So you've had $10 utilized toward this endeavor. Then you're ready to submit it to PCGS. Now, under services, you could go to printable submission forms, and this will pop up. Now, I went to submission guidelines, which is under that same tab, under services, all right, under printable submission forms, that's where you're going to find submission guidelines like you see here. And then you're going to have this form. Now, the form is printable. You can print it, print it out and then fill it out by hand, all right? If, in case you guys are wondering, here are the Collector's Club um, prices. You will have to pick one and then pay for it. And these are annual. So a silver level gets you so many different you know services and perks for coin grading that it costs 69 dollars a year gold is the gold level is 149 dollars and platinum is 249 dollars all right usually i go for the platinum because by the time you've done this a number of times it pays for itself all right so you also get submission submission vouchers and things like that but you'll print out this sheet and you'll simply go and, you know, write in all the information as if you're filling out a form to go to the DMV to get a license, you know, or buying a car. You have to fill out a credit application. So you put in your name, your member name, number, which after you've 
joined up, you will get a member number. Then you'll add that in there. You'll add in all of the address return shipping information in there. You're going to choose right here in service group whether you want the standard or the gold shield. All right, gold shield, they, they throw in a little extra kind of like uh, extra care with the coin and the encapsulation. Um, and then, you know, you, you just go through each box. See, see how it's highlighted red? Each box has to be filled out with one unique field. All right, genuine option, service level. I mean, what, what do you want to do? You want grading or regrade. Let's say you don't agree with the grade that you got and you want to send it back to have them do a reconsideration or a regrade. They, they'll take a look at it. Or reconsideration is also here too. Um, crossover. So let's say you have an NGC graded coin and you want to cross it over to PCGS. You'll fill that out as well. Let's say your holder has a, um, a chip or it's cracked. You could send it back for a reholder and then all the other stuff. All right, service levels. Now this is important because you're going to use the PCGS price guide value deter to determine the service level that you're going to issue this at. That 1966 Washington quarter, right here, with a price guide value of $15,000. I mean, if you wanted to grade 68 and you firmly believe that it's going to be worth that, then you're going to have to look at these service levels and then pick the appropriate service level with the maximum amount, max coin value that fits the mold of that 66 Washington quarter. So economy specials, the coins have a max coin value of 300 bucks. That's a $30 submission. Mint errors and special issues have a max coin value of $10,000 and that costs 65 bucks. Same with express. And as its name implies, you actually get a quicker turnaround time using the express feature. Walkthrough is really simple. That's for high, high price coins, a hundred thousand dollars cap. That's a hundred fifty dollars. And then you also have rarities, which it could be like a two million dollar coin. It's three hundred dollars plus one percent of the actual, I guess, value of the coin. All right, so that could be pretty expensive. I've seen people spend many thousands of dollars for one coin submission. But you have to pick the correct one. And don't 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 cheapen this, okay? Don't go, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm cheap. And I'm trying to submit a 1966 Washington quarter that you think is going to grade out in mid-state 68 and sell for $15,000, give or take, and then go and select modern. Modern value, $2,500 max coin value. All right. So when they do that, that is also the amount of money that they will cover for you when they ship it back to you. That's important. You got to know that. And then you go down here to coin details and then you just go down the line of each line. You fill it in. Quantity one. Um, coin number. You know, you'll just put 001 or whatever it is. Date, mint mark. Uh, denomination, 25 cents. Coin description variety. If there's a variety, you add that in there. If it's just a coin description, you'll put Washington Quarter. Add-on services, of course, everything costs a little extra for first strike. So that'd be like for Silver Eagles and stuff. True View, they'll take a nice high-quality picture. That's really great and actually pretty nice for tone coins. Variety attribution, if you're submitting like a double die, you want them to attribute it, so click on that or just check mark it. Oversized holder, okay, if you want to submit like a date set or, or a specific date PDNS Morgan dollars and you want all three of them to be in the same holder, they could do that for you too. Um, and then by the time you've put in all the information, okay, you could have a number of coins. And I would usually tell folks, if you're going to submit modern coins for grading, you don't just submit one coin. You submit a number of them, all right? And it's pretty much the process of elimination, right? The more you submit, the better chance you get of having that one example that will pop at the top grade. And that's what you want to try and do, all right? So you're going to go down here at the bottom, um, 
Can't really do pickup unless you're an authorized dealer through PCGS. Uh, signature required. Oftentimes you'll put yes unless you want them to leave it at your front door if you trust your neighbor neighborhood. That's probably irrelevant. And then you'll choose FedEx, like an overnight feature, or Express Mail, which is the USPS version of overnight. All right, and then insurance limit will be however much you feel that that coin is going to be worth. Um, even though you don't know what the grade is, you have to put the uh, the insurance limit for the coverage on there. All right, so the fee calculation, what you're going to do from this point forward is go ahead and write in everything. So we've identified since we're trying to submit a coin that we feel like is going to be the top graded mid-state 68 1966 wash and quarter that we are going to be doing the walkthrough service that's 150 dollars we're not doing first strike true views variety attributions none of that stuff so it's 150 dollars to send this 1966 washington quarter all right and um you would probably do gold shield so that's an extra five bucks so that's 155 dollars uh there's a handling fee of ten dollars so that jumps it up to 165. So by the time you've purchased the coin and that you've done all of the required stuff to submit it to PCGS, you would have dumped in just one coin $175. You'll go ahead and put your payment information in here. You're going to go ahead and write it out, you know, credit card, cash, um, you know, you think that, you know, check money order, they still take that and you'll sign it and date it. Um, and then go ahead and get it all set up and package it up for shipment. All right. So $175 later, um, getting this thing all buttoned down, ready to go. It doesn't end there. It really doesn't because what's also going to happen is you do need to ship this out. And, um, when you ship it out, you are also going to have to pay to ship it. And what PCGS and everybody else recommends is that you send this registered mail or as a certified mail. It's the most expensive one because you're covered for a boatload of money in the event that the coin gets lost or stolen. Um, which I think is $50,000. It might even be more than that. It might be a hundred thousand, but the service is not cheap. It costs $30. All right. So $30 for registered mail. So that brings up your submission and your coin and everything that comes with it up to $205. So that's a lot of money for one coin. But right, we're trying to be big dogs here. We're trying to get that coin that's worth $15,000. Um, and that, that is the first kind of like line of of fees and out-of-pocket costs that's associated with trying to score a very expensive five-figure coin such as this another thing that that maybe you ought to add to the mix since this is your first time on pcgs is going to be the club membership fee through collector's universe so oftentimes people get a little gun shy they'll they'll pencil in the silver for 70 dollars so that brings up your out-of-pocket costs for your first submission at $275. That's a whopper. That's a lot of money. But with a lot of things, that that brings you a lot of returns. you got to spend money to make money. A few of the tips I tell people is that you try and submit multiple coins. That's going to... Um, uh, uh, lessen the amount of money that you're going to spend out of pocket for some of these for some of these coins especially when you send out multiple coins um, it, it's going to make it a little bit easier pill to swallow because if you just go out and send one coin and you're just you're putting you're putting one bullet in that gun and you're going to fire it off hoping that you're going to hit the target square and you know and you're 500 meters away I mean that's going to be a tough one you want to be able to have as much ammunition as possible going into a submission. So that way it's worth your while. Because if you just send out one ultra modern coin at $275, 
It might be the most bitter pill that you will ever swallow. It might be enough to make you get out of numismatics. I've seen it a few times. Um, I, I mean, if you have an endless amount of, of capital that you could, you know, do this with enough regularity, then, then that's all well and good. But most people, you know, want the big payday. And now you're realizing how much it costs at, at the ground level like you've never joined a pcgs membership before so you gotta pay the membership costs you gotta buy the coins right i'm using one of the less expensive kind of like entry type coins at seven to ten dollars and then the reality sets in when you're sitting there looking at this submission page this this submission form and then you ha actually have to hold true in selecting the right service level and then that's where it really sets in. You're like, oh my God, I'm at $200. I'm at $250. I'm at $275. And you ship that puppy off. And then, man, it is the most biggest leap of faith that you will ever get into. Now, if you've listened up to this point, guess what? This is exactly how I was at the very beginning. Back in 2000, I believe, 4, when I joined PCGS and wanted to do this for a living, that was hard. You know, I worked hourly. I was, at the time, I was making like, I don't know what I was making. It wasn't nearly enough to justify a two to $300 coin submission for one coin. But guess what? I did it. And it didn't turn out too well. And what I really wanted to accomplish with this video is to show you to illustrate the out-of-pocket cost that's associated with sending out a coin which you believe based off of the information that you got at the very beginning of the video by researching heritage auctions completed sales or great collections or ebay that there is a lot to lose if you don't know what you're doing and that's why i always say if you wanted to get into it I always recommend get into more classic obsolete coins where you're going to take less of a hit if things if things go south. But if you get into a very modern series like Lincoln Memorial Sense or Jefferson Nichols, so you don't know what the heck you're doing or how much money you're spending, it could get disastrous right away. But anyways, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, kind of like a, I'm not going to say slap in the face, but a huge reality check when it comes to the amount of money that you will be coughing up as a new kind of like upstart in coin grading. Yeah, there's a lot of opportunity to make a ton of money. And if you do it right and you practice at it and you don't jump the gun, and you don't get impetuous that you will make a lot of money. You will make a great living. I promise you that. But do not rush the process. Do not just haphazardly pick something because a coin of that type had sold at one point eight years ago for $10,000 and nothing has sold since. There is a reason for stuff like that to happen. But that's going to go ahead and do it. I want to thank you guys for joining in on this video. Hopefully you got a little takeaway from the overall cost basis of submitting one coin. Um, if you, you know, if you do it right, it will treat you right. And um, the, one of the most important things you got to know about this hobby is you got to see it as a hobby first. You got to understand the A, Bs, and Cs. Of coin collecting you got to know the series you got to know what makes them tick you know why is one series so hard to grade and why is this one have so many rarities in it all right uh, because you know you might you might surprise yourself and find something that's worth a whole lot more money but that's only because you have gained that education you've had mentors to help walk you through the process of getting to know cap bus quarters which by the way are one of the most expensive series of coins that you could just dive right into because of their availability but that's going to go ahead and do it i want to thank you guys for joining in 
on this video. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Um, as always, like, share, subscribe. Hit that good old bell for instant notifications. And Coinaholics, we are discovering together. If you guys need help, we are accessible. You can shoot us in an email at info at livecoinqa.com or come join us at our Facebook group. We're always looking for good people that want to know more about the hobby. And that's uh, livecoin Q and A, ampersand A. Um, and we're all there. And we're there to help. We're there to give you some uh, some advice as you uh, decide to uh, move in to what could be a very profitable move for you in, in your life. But that's going to go ahead and do it. Thank you for joining. Thank you for your support of my channel. And I will see you next time. Best of luck.